Well, hey, YouTube, it's Chuck. Welcome back. Well, this is gonna be part two. Part two of the double massive swarm and honey mess video I made yesterday. If you didn't see that video, I encourage you to watch it because if you've never trapped a swarm that had just too much honey on a hot day and it all turns into a pile of hot mush before you get it into the hive, that's the video that I made yesterday. It was a mess. Uh, I'm gonna put a link here in the description uh, and also maybe a card above, but this is part two to that. But the reason I'm making a part two is because I left this hive in a situation that I'd never done before. I had two massive swarms. I didn't find the queen in either. Uh, I lost a lot of bees on the first one due to a honey mashy mess. Um, and I'll show you some pictures here of that. Uh, and I put them together into that double deep. And my theory was I'm gonna let them settle out and see if I can find the queen tomorrow. It's been 24 hours. I came out this morning. They're definitely clustering. They're disoriented. Uh, there were still bees hanging on the swarm boxes that are left outside in small little clusters. I did shake all of those off and look for the queen. I didn't see her in any clusters that I found outside of the hive. What I'm worried about, and if you watched that video yesterday, there were a lot of clumps of bees I put in there that were just massy, wet, gooey balls of bees. If a large portion of those bees died, that will turn into a stinky mess that will attract small hive beetles and small hive beetle larvae. Because more than likely, it'll be more dead bees than the, uh, the, um, the bees can haul out on their own. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna just observe the way they're behaving mashed together. I'm gonna see if the dead bee situation I put in there has been cleaned out or whether or not they were actually not all dead. And I'm gonna kind of reorient it and, and clean out the hives to make, make sure they're in the best shape they can be to continue on. Uh, I'm going to glance for the queen. I'm not going to look at every frame for the queen. This is going to be a little bit shorter than yesterday, but I figured it would be educational for those of you that watched yesterday's video just to learn uh, how the bees can adapt and, and what they're doing uh, on day two after being combined um, in a double deep. There's a lot of bees in there, um, amazingly, uh, even though they are reorienting. So stick with me. I'm going to move the camera up a little bit closer. Have one more sip of coffee and we'll dive in that hive. Be right back. Okay. I'm all suited up, but I wanted to just kind of let you know what it looked like as we're going in the hive here. So if you look, this is the mass that I put in the box from yesterday. Most of these bees that are still in here are dead. I found a few little clusters of bees, kind of like these right here, that are just hanging on. Um, and I looked for the queen in those little clusters and I didn't really find any. So there's still a few in here, but most of these bees perished in the honey slime mess that I talked about yesterday. Lots of good nectar and honey in here, lots of good wax. I'm not gonna waste this, but unfortunately we have some soldiers that did not make it. This is the close-up view of how they're behaving today. Um, they're fanning, look at this. They are hauling out the dead bees right there. So they're doing their job, clean, cleaning out what they can. Uh, I'm gonna double check that I didn't leave too much work for them to do. And then up top, these are the bees I actually pulled out of that box a little earlier before I started the video. These are, these are the bees that were alive in small little clusters that just are still a little too sticky and gooey to have climbed out and walked up on their own. There's a lot of reorienting here, so I am all veiled up today. Um, obviously because this is a swarm and I don't want to uh, get into a little bit of a mess. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and crack open this hive and see what we've got today. I'm gonna shake off these bees in the hive rather than let them drop off. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of give it a first peek. Wow. Okay, so there's the top of the double stack. Obviously it was ventilated, so they had a little bit of air up here. Um, the bottom hive was the bigger mess, if you remember from yesterday. So I'm just gonna take this top box off and then set it aside uh, onto this top board and start in the bottom, just because that is where I'm a little bit more concerned. Whoa, it's heavy though. That honey, okay. All right, so, so far, I'm actually happy with the way this looks. There's not a ton of bees in here. There's a lot on the outside still, but I'm just gonna take a glance at these bees. Yeah, they're cleaning up nicely. They're behaving normally. I'm gonna take a, remove a few of these and set them aside so I can see down the bottom what the bottom looks like. So 
some hatching bees covered up by that oxalic strip. Yeah, like I thought, there's some dead bees in the bottom here. I'm gonna keep pulling these out so I can show you a little bit better. I'm not really looking for the queen too much. I'd love to spot her just at a quick glance. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit more complicated than I thought. Okay, so I, what I need to do is I need to put these in here and take the whole box off and leave the bottom board exposed so I can show you. And oh, by the way, so I don't lose all these good bees uh, by setting them in the wrong spot too early. Okay. So this is coming off. I'm gonna try to, you know, I should be able to lift from the sides, I think, okay. All right, there's the dead bees. So this is what I was worried about becoming the larval mess. If you, this is too much work for them to clean up. You can already see a lot of larva, the white stuff, that they're already starting to clean up. Um, in a few days, because this is sticky sweet, this will just be small hive beetle bait. Matter of fact, they're even starting to come. There's a couple small hive beetles right there. Um, they could be laying eggs right now. So what I do, and this is because I live near a pond. Let me just show you. I'm going to get a few of these bees that are alive off of here. Come with me. I feed the fish. This is nothing more than insects and larvae, lots of protein, and the fish will be just fine with it. And or it'll just settle to the bottom. But either way, the larva that could be in here will not survive. If you just put this in a trash can, the larva could actually hatch out in your trash can. Um, chickens love this stuff if you got chickens. I don't have any chickens. So this is me just cleaning out the dead larva so the bees don't have too much to do. And that's how I do that. So let's put this back together. All right, now we're in a good position for them to succeed. Uh, yesterday, I wasn't sure sticking those big handful of bees if they were alive or dead. We now know most of them were dead um, or did not survive. Oh my gosh, the transition. Wow, that's heavy still. All right, it's all straight before I second the, nope, not. Get this straight on here before I second the second deep one there. Okay, where'd my brush go? So I don't squish too many bees when I do this. I got just a blank frame for the end here use up all the space so they don't build any crazy burr comb. There's plenty of brood in here. If the queen's not in here, they can make one. Beetle trap. Oh my gosh. Lifting up deeps with honey in them is getting to be harder and harder. <clears throat> what I'm putting on today that I didn't show you yesterday I do this this time of year in the heat and because I don't want to leave that lid cracked. This is a ventilated top screen. It's got a screen on here with a nice gap on the top. It allows air to flow through, especially with hives with a lot of bees. I want them to be as ventilated as possible. Um, I don't want them to swarm or anything else again or abscond because it's too hot. This allows a lot of airflow all the way through the top. It does sometimes create some clusters for due to the smell, but this is where we're leaving this today. I'm still gonna leave this bucket out here, tilt it up so that maybe some of these bees will walk up 
my primary concern was was realized there was too many dead bees on the bottom that would have turned into a small hive beetle uh, farm uh, i got those out of there fed them to the fish just the bees that survived plenty of larvae and brood in here plenty of bees so as long as they don't abscond because i moved two different swarms from two different locations into a spot um, but there's enough brood in there that they should not abscond they should take care of that brood and uh, continue on and make a new queen if there is not one in one of those boxes uh, probably going to need to check back in a week or two to look for eggs and larvae it's too early to check for that because they were just in the box yesterday anyway that's part two hopefully that makes sense to you i'm comfortable this hive is in as good a position as it can be to succeed not knowing if there's a queen but the number of bees as long as they stay they'll be just fine and uh these poor soldiers suffered from the the, the, the hot honey that melted uh, but ultimately i will preserve this wax and uh, perhaps open feed some of that open nectar uh, just to the other bees hopefully that helps you enjoyed this lesson or discussion uh, we'll see you next time have a great day everybody